Hey everybody, it's Salzi's version of First Chapter Fridays. Today I'm going to bring you this book. It's called The Heist Society. Um, I chose it from literally the bookcases off my kids' shelves. Um, they loved this book. In fact, it was the one book that got my daughter to start reading in the first place. So I hope you like it. This book is about Katerina Bishop, and when she was three, her parents took her to the Louvre to case it. For her seventh birthday, Katerina and her uncle Eddie traveled to Austria to steal the crown jewels. When Kat turned 15, she planned a con of her own, scamming her way to the best boarding school in the country, determined to leave her family business behind. But when a powerful mobster's priceless art collection had been stolen, only the thief could have pulled off that job, Kat's father. Caught between Interpol and a far more deadly enemy, Kat's dad needs her help. For Kat, there's only one solution, track down the paintings and steal them back. She's got two weeks, a teenage crew, and hopefully just enough talent to pull off the biggest heist in the country. So here's chapter one. No one knew for certain when trouble started at Colgan School. Some members of its alumni association blamed the decision to admit girls. Others cited newfangled liberal ideas and a general decline in the respect for elders worldwide. But no matter the theory, no one could deny that recently life at the Colgan School was different. Oh, its grounds were still perfectly manicured. Three quarters of the senior class were already well on their way to being early accepted into Ivy League. Photos of presidents and senators and CEOs still lined the new paneled hallway outside the headmaster's office. But in the old days, no one would ever have declined admission to Colgan on the day that class before started, forcing the administration to scramble to fill the slot. Historically, any vacancy would have been met with a waiting list a mile long, but this year, for some reason, there was only one applicant eager to enroll at that late date. Most of all, there had been a time when honor meant something at Colgan School when school property was respected, when the faculty was revered, when the headmaster's mint condition 1958 Porsche Speedster would never have been placed on the top of a fountain in the, squat, in the quad with water shooting out of its headlights on an unusually warm evening in November. There had been a time when the girl responsible, the very one who had lucked into the last minute vacancy only a few months before, would have had the decency to admit that she'd done and quietly taken her leave out of the school. But unfortunately, that era, much like the headmaster's car, was finished. Two days after Porsche Gate, as the students had taken to calling it, the girl in question had the nerve to sit in the hallway of the administration building beneath a black and white stare of three senators, two presidents, and a Supreme Court justice, with her held head held high as if she'd done nothing wrong. More students than usual filed down the corridor that day, going out of their way to steal a glance and whisper behind her cupped hands. That's her. She's the one I was telling you about. How do you think she did it? Any other student might have flinched in that bright spotlight, but from the moment Katerina Bishop set foot in Oak at the Colgan campus, she'd been something of an enigma. Some said she'd gained her last minute slot because she was the daughter of an incredibly wealthy European businessman who had made a very generous donation. Some looked at her perfect posture and cool demeanor, rolled her first name across their tongues, and assumed she was of Russian royalty one of the last of the Romanovs. Some called her a hero, others called her a freak. Everyone had heard a different story, but no one knew the truth, that Kath really had grown up all over Europe, but she wasn't an heiress. That she did, in fact, have a Fabergé egg, but she wasn't a Romanov. Kath herself could have added a thousand rumors to the mill, but she stayed quiet knowing that only the only thing that no one would know or believe was the truth. Katerina, the headmaster's secretary called, the board will see you now. Kat rose calmly, but as she stepped toward the open door 20 feet from the headmaster's office, she heard her shoes squeak. She felt her hands tingle. Every nerve in her body seemed to stand on end, but she realized that somehow in the last three months, she had become someone more than just her squeaky shoes. That, whether she had liked it or not, they were going to hear her coming. Kat was used to looking at a room and seeing all the angles, but she'd never seen a room quite like this before. Through the hallway outside was a long, was, though the hallway was long and straight, this room was round. Dark wood surrounded her. Dim lights hung from a low ceiling. It felt to Cat almost like a cave, except for a tall, slim window where a narrow beam of sunlight came pouring in. Suddenly, Cat found herself reaching out, wanting to run her hand through the rays. But then someone cleared his throat. A pencil rolled across the desk and Cat's shoes squeaked again, bringing her back into the moment. You may sit down. The voice came from back the back of the room. 
And at first, Kat didn't know who'd spoken. Like the voice, the faces before her were unfamiliar. The 12 on her right were wrinkle-free and fresh, students just like her, or as much like her as Colgan students could possibly be. The 12 people on her left had hair that was a little thinner or makeup that was a little heavier, but regardless of their age, all members of the Colgan School Honor Board wearing identical black robes and impassive expressions as they watched Cat walk to the center of a circular room. Sit, Miss Bishop, had Master Franklin said from his place in the front row. He looked especially pale in his dark robe. His cheeks were too puffy, his hair too styled. He was the sort of man, Cat realized, who probably wished he were as fast and sporty as his car. And then, despite everything, Cat grinned a little, imagining the headmaster himself propped up in the middle of the quad, squirting water. As Cat took her seat, the senior boy beside the headmaster rose and announced, Colgan School Honor Board shall come to order. His voice echoed around the room. All who wish to speak shall be heard. All who wish to follow the light shall see, and all who wish to seek justice shall find the truth. Honor for one. The boy finished, and before Cat could really process what she had just heard, 24 voices chorused, honor for all. The boy sat ruffled through the pages of an old leather-bound book until the headmaster prodded, Jason. Oh yeah, Jason picked up the heavy book. The Colgan School Honor Board will hear the case of Katerina Bush Bishop, sophomore. The committee will hear the testimony that on the 10th of November, Miss Bishop, who did willfully mm, steal personal property. Jason chose his words carefully while a girl in the second row stifled a laugh that by committing this act at 2 a.m., she was also in violation of the school curfew, and that by Miss Bishop willfully destroying school artifacts. Jason lowered the book and paused, a little more dramatically than necessary, Cat thought. But before he added, according to the Colgan School Code of Honor, these charges are punishable by expulsion. Do you understand these charges as they've been read to you? Cat took a moment to make sure the board really did want her to respond before she said, I didn't do it. The charges, had Master Franklin lead forward. The question, Miss Bishop, whether you understood the charges. I do. Cat felt her heartbeat change rhythm. I just don't agree with them. I, the headmaster started again, but a woman to his right touched his arm lightly. She smiled at Cat and said, Headmaster, I seem to remember that in matters such as this, it's customary to take the student's full academic history into account. Perhaps we should begin with a review of Miss Bishop's record. Oh, the headmaster seemed to deflate a bit. Well, that's quite right, Miss Connors. But since Miss Bishop has only been with us a few months, she has no record to speak of. But surely this is not the first young woman that, ha that has attended, Miss Connors act asked, and Cat bit back a nervous laugh. Well, yes, the headmaster admitted grudgingly. Of course, as we tried to contact those schools, but there was a fire at Trinity that destroyed the entire admissions office and most of their records and at the Byrne Institute experienced a terrible computer crash last summer, so we've had a very difficult time finding things. The headmaster looked at Kat as if these disasters must follow wherever she went. Miss Connors, on the other hand, looked impressed. Those are the two of the finest schools in Europe. Yes, ma'am. My father, he does a lot of work there. What do your parents do? As Kat searched the second row for a girl who posed the question, she stared to ask exact she started to ask exactly why her parents' occupations mattered. But then she remembered that Colgan was the kind of place where your parents were who your parents were and what they did seemed to matter. My mother died when I was six. A few people gave a slight sigh at this, but Headmaster Franklin pressed on. And your father, he asked, unwilling to let the conveniently deceased mother swing by with sympathy votes that would sway Cat's way. What does he do? Art, Cat said simply and carefully. He does a lot of things, but he specializes in art. At this, the head of the fine arts department perked up. Collecting, the man said. And again, had to fight back a smile. More like distribution. Interestingly, though, this may be, had Master Franklin interrupted. It does not pertain to the matter at hand. Cat could have sworn he'd stopped himself from saying to my convertible. No one responded. The only motion in the room was the dust that still danced in the narrow beam of falling light. Finally, Headmaster Franklin leaned forward and narrowed his eyes. Cat seemed to see lasers that focused right on the headmaster and snapped. Miss Bishop, were you, where were you on the night of November 10th? In my room, studying. On a Friday night, you were studying? 
the headmaster glanced at his colleagues as if it were the most outrageous lie any Colgan student had ever dared to utter. Well, Colgan is an exceptionally difficult institution. I have to study. And you didn't see anyone, Jason asked. No, I... Oh, but, you, but, but someone saw you, didn't they, Miss Bishop? Headmaster Franklin's voice was cold and sharp. We have cameras monitoring the grounds, or don't you know? He asked with a chuckle. But of course, Kat knew about the cameras. She suspected that she knew more about every aspect of Colgan's security than the headmaster did, but she didn't think that it was appropriate time to say so. There were too many witnesses, too much at stake, and besides, the headmaster was already smiling triumphantly and dimming the lights with a remote control. Kat had to twist in her chair to see a section of the round wall sliding aside, revealing a large TV. This young woman bears a striking resemblance to you, does she not, Miss Bishop? As Kat watched the grainy black and white video, she recognized the quad, of course, but she had never seen the person who was running across it wearing a black hooded sweatshirt. That's not me. But the dormitory doors were only opened once at night at 2.27 a.m. using a student identification card. This card. Kat's stomach flipped as the single worst picture she'd ever taken just appeared on top of the screen. This is your Colgan student ID, is it not, Miss Bishop? Yes, but... And this, had Master Franklin reached beneath his seat, was found during a search of your belongings. The personalized license plate, Colgan 1, seemed to glow as he held it above his head. It fell to Kat as though the air had lift to the dim room as a strange feeling swept over her. After all, accused, she could handle. Wrongly accused was entirely new territory. Katerina, Miss Connors asked, as if begging Kat to prove them wrong. I know this seems like a lot of very convincing evidence, Kat said, her mind working, gears spinning. Maybe too much evidence. I mean, would I really use my own ID if I'd done it? So since there is evidence that you did it, you should prove that you didn't do it. Even Miss Connor sounded skeptical. Well, Kat said, I'm not stupid. The headmaster laughed. Oh, well, how would you have done it? He was mocking her, baiting her, yet Kat couldn't seem to think about the answer. There was a shortcut behind Warren Hall that was closer and darker and completely void of cameras. The doors wouldn't need an ID to open if you had enough bubblicious that you could cover the sensor on your way out. If you're going to pull a prank of that nature, you don't do it in the night before a morning when the maintenance staff will be awake before all the students. Headmaster Franklin smiled smugly, relishing her silence, as if he were so smart. But Kat had already learned that people at Colgan were frequently wrong, like when her Italian teacher had said Kat's accent would always make her stand out in the streets of Rome, even though Kat had already passed for a Franciscan nun during a particularly difficult job in the Vatican City. She thought about how silly her history of art teacher had sounded when he waxed, when he waxed poetic about the Mona Lisa when Kat knew for a fact that the Louvre's original had been replaced with a fake in 1862. Kat had learned quite a lot of things before enrolling at the Colgan School, but the thing she knew best was that this was the kind of place where she could never share them. I don't know about Trinity or Bern or any of those other European schools, young lady, but at the Colgan School, we follow the rules. The headmaster's first banged his fists, banged the table. We respect the pop property of others. We adhere to the honor code of this institution and the laws of the country. But Kat already knew about honor. She'd grown up with her own set of rules, and the first rule of Katerina Bishop's family was simple. Don't get caught. Katerina, Miss Connor said, do you have anything to add that might explain this? Kat could have said, that's not me. There must be some kind of mistake. The great irony was that if this had been an ordinary con, she could have lied her way through it without a single thought. But the truth? That she that she wasn't good at it? Her ID badge had been duplicated. The license plate had been planted in her room. Someone had dressed like her and made sure that they were caught on camera. She'd been framed, and Kat didn't dare say that she was thinking that whoever had done it, they were very, very good. Kat's bags were packed in 20 minutes. She might have lingered saying her goodbyes, but there were no goodbyes to say. And so after three months at Colgan, Kat couldn't help but wonder if the day she got expelled from boarding school might become the proudest moment of her family's long and colorful past. She imagined everyone sitting around Uncle Eddie's kitchen table for years from now, telling about the time little Katerina stole a whole, other, a whole other life and then walked away without a trace. Well, almost. Kat thought as she carried her bags past the once perfect lawn. Brett still tracked to and from the mangled fountain in the center of the quad, a muddy reminder that would no doubt last until spring. 
She heard laughter coming from behind her and turned. A group of eighth grade boys were standing together, whispering, until the one that bravely broke away from the pack. Uh, he started, and then he glanced back at his friends, summoning courage. We were wondering, um, how'd you do it? A stretch limo pulled through the ornate gates and up to the curb. The trunk popped open, and as the driver started for her bags, Kat looked at the boys and then back at Colgan one final time. That is an excellent question. The bells chimed, students hurried between classes across the quad, and Kat crawled into the backseat of the limo. She couldn't help but feeling slightly sad, or sad that anyone could feel about losing something that wasn't rightfully theirs to begin with. She leaned back and sighed, well, I guess that's over. And it would have been if another voice hadn't said, actually, it's just beginning. That's it. If you want to read more, check out The Heist Society by Allie Carter. Bye, guys.